so so do you not need us for this car now well i mean if i kind of probably do unless charging the battery helped yeah what so, is all this good these goodies well i mean well it's more than that <laughs> What's this? Was this your problem? Uh, no. Is this your engine computer? I, it's one of them. I don't know if why, that. Why do you have this? Because. It came from the customer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. And, I mean, fuse box. Wait, like, show that again. Caleb missed that. And then the fuse box that's sitting up on the on the roof? Yeah. So this is from another garage? It, it's kind of. Or is it? Yeah. We'll just, we'll just leave just it at that. that. Okay. So. I remade the grounds down here because I had no calm with the engine computer. Okay. And then I remade the grounds in there. Now I could talk to the engine computer. I'm like, nice. Okay. But now I can't talk to the tranny computer. So wait, so you you fixed grounds and yes. now you can talk to the engine computer, yes. but you can't talk to the TCM. No. And that is separate on this one. It's this one, I think. Here's the ECM. I think this is a TCM. Okay. So I start checking before I left Friday yes. and I have my two powers and a good ground, I think. Okay. That's all I know right now. But what's the history of this? Uh, well, so the guy bought it for 400 bucks. <laughs> I didn't turn it down enough. The guy bought it for 400 bucks and then- The put, way it is. Well, like no, a, I want to say he put a bunch of money into it to try to get it through inspection. But I mean, like, I, I don't know how long ago that was. <laughs> Five of 22? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's what he said. And then he drove it like two miles and it shut down. That was it. Okay. Now they've been throwing at it. Okay. Do we know what all was thrown at it? I know we it? can't lift it. It looks like a throttle body I, I, was replaced. I know. I, I'm sure. This guy right here, Caleb, doesn't look all that old. What'd you find? What you... Well, you don't answer the phone. No, I didn't want to answer the phone today. Like Danner needs crazy help. Crazy noise came on. What, it's a five star kid? He needs another tech. It's his girlfriend. <laughs> we'll it's bad. Uh, yeah, it's bad. I mean, what are you going to do? I don't man? know. I'm, not... I'm quitting soon. As you... soon as Bob retires, no, I'm Bob's quitting. Bob's going to go in the office and you need to get another tech. So that's, anyway. That's the answer to your <laughs> to your dilemma. <laughs> but then where am I going to park anybody? That's that's like if I hired another guy, where is their car going to go? Well, you you be able to turn the cars out quicker so they're not sitting I there. I can't because every one of them is like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a Corvette with a dead hole. But then you click, can. Click, 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 yeah, but then hole. you can I focus that. on that stuff. I don't want to. Well, I'll help you. <laughs> I'll help you. Anyway, this is what you're going to help me with today, okay. if that's okay. Yeah, it sure. might start. I don't know. The All battery right, so you need me to confirm the TCM it. stuff. The engine computer's talk and you fix some grounds. Can you point the grounds out that you fixed real quick? Yeah. Keep the light and back I hope, so Caleb can I, get a shot I hope out. I did them all good because the wires are so brittle. Okay. But I, from what I can look, what, gather, I believe this one for some reason is the tranny ground. Okay. Because if it comes, if it is this and it comes out of here, then it, it seems like the ground loops in right here and then it goes it over goes there. To what? Where's it going? Oh. To this Why does that look janky? I mean, it is. The whole car is janky. Here, let me see that. That shot right there. That. See the I ground, think. The ground I, don't, I could be totally wrong. This was like something I didn't want to get into on Friday and I started because... I understand. And where's the other grounds The other fixed? grounds are underneath here. See how... Oh, I see it. Okay, right I just there. put them all right into there. one yellow eyelet. Oh. But every one of the wires that I start cutting weren't copper anymore. You know what I mean? But I think that I have uh, a good ground. Gotcha. Okay. I'm not sure. We'll use some hook tools if we yeah, need to. Just okay. to check all so those no grounds. So no chrome TCM there's right five now. five of them going into that connector. So it didn't start and run or anything then? I, have, I heard one time I heard it go and it like it almost tried but I, it, it won't Okay. You can't get the key out of the ignition because it doesn't know it's in park. Okay, gotcha. All right. You know, so you the, never had it really running. I have it, not had it run. I it just was, one time. It was towed in as a no-com. Yeah. You did troubleshooting. You found some bad grounds on the ECM. Yes. Was that in checking the ECM wires? or no, you just because I just, know what I'm doing It was at late this point. In the, on Friday and you, yeah. you, you found bad grounds. Yeah, so. Um, and then after you fixed those grounds, then I, had, to then to I had communication with the computer. Okay. And I'm like, oh, cool. But then I realized I still couldn't get it out of gear. Okay. Or back in park. Okay. And you got to press. They got to call them apart. They got so much stuff uh, apart. 
Okay. I, I'm not going to put it back together, I don't yeah, think. Yeah, no. Here's um, the ground. Remember these grounds? You were here. Oh, yeah. So Where they're so, all... But they're all crimped up here, but then they're all broken and corroded right there. You could see the pile of corrosion in here that even though the wire, the, yes. the insulation's clipped here, they were not grounded at yeah, all. Yeah, we've had that, for sure. So I put, I just what read year is it, What year is this? Mm. Where's the year? Uh, what? Did they not put, a, oh, 2005. Oh, five, it, this would be a can car then, I guess? Should be. Should be. Oh, five Chevy Cobalt. All right, I'm gonna go grab my stuff. This garage had all this crap laying on the car, so we don't have to hear grief from our community. How, how dare you put all that stuff on, on that customer's car? I know. I just came this way. No, I put it there. It came that way. It that came way. this way. I mean, they got towed down the road with all that shit sitting on top of the hood. I mean, we can't lift it from what the tow truck driver told me. Why can't we lift? <laughs> well, I could, but I'll have to find a better spot. Yeah, he said, don't lift it. I'm like, great. <laughs> so what are we doing? We're painting a turd here. I mean, no, we just wanted to drive off of my lot and break down somewhere else. Okay, got it. You said you couldn't get it out of gear? I'm able to change gears. No, I said it won't go into park and let you remove the key because it doesn't know it's in park. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that's exactly what it's doing, okay. Okay. So since it says it doesn't know where it's at, it won't start either because it uses okay. the the can stuff probably to tell the neutral safety stuff and. Okay. I guess. Okay. See, our battery voltage is dropping quick here. We're gonna have to get a charger on this. Okay. Two two Chevy Cobalt. What it did identify it. Let's do a code scan on all systems. Probably gonna clear anything we find and then reread them uh, control module random access memory that's in the engine ignition switch circuit 2 lost column with TCM lost column with BCM airbag codes body control module codes instrument panel codes power steering codes radio codes clear all of these faults Nice thing about the Snap-on one is it'll record that. I can go back and look at that data list later. Let's recode scan this again. Okay, so I have a lost comm with transmission control module. Body control module, I have outside air temp circuit fault. Lost comm with TCM, so the BCM's not talking to the TCM either. Power steering control module, vehicle speed circuit invalid serial data. Wonder if it's getting that from the transmission the vehicle speed info for the power steering. Okay, no calm with TCM. The BCM's also not talking to the TCM. Um, we could do a, a quick network measurement. I don't think that that's probably where I'd normally start for something like this where it's just the TCM not talking. Between the ECM, BCM, uh, both of them not talking to the TCM, I think I'd go right to the TCM itself. I don't think the network stuff here from the DLC is gonna be very fruitful, but, but we'll do it anyway. So, I know I can't get the key out. So, this right here, it's part of the shift interlock solenoid. There's a solenoid here that you're not seeing where I'm pointing. So when I'm releasing the key, that, that solenoid actually pulls in to release the key. Okay, six and 14, that's if this is can. I see no lights on that. See, we got burned by this before. If this is not can, I'm just gonna go between the two, between six and 14. We're gonna do a resistance measurement is really what I'm interested in. We should have 60 ohms, we do. So network is intact. It's not open, shorted type thing. Again, it's one module that's not talking. I don't think this is needed. Show you guys the network too. While we're here, turn the key on, watch it. This is can based on the 60 ohms we had. Oh, gotta switch my leads back. Ignore the green trace, let me turn that off. Drop this down. So you guys, show you some can packets. This is a comparator where we're comparing between the two. I'm not going can high to ground or can low to ground. This is, you know, comparing between the can high and can low. That's where my leads are connected. Get a look at this, these packets for a second. 
freeze, zoom out. Just looking for repetition here for so I can look at these packets. So there's three, then two tight ones. See the three, then two. See the three, then two. So I don't know if I can do it this way or not, but I'm gonna start there. What I'm looking for is sometimes you can see within a, a data packet if the module's missing a power or ground just by the way the packets look. This isn't the greatest scope for doing this kind of detail. All right, scratch that. This isn't gonna help me at all. Um, we're gonna go right to the TCM. I'm in the TCM menu, let's just see. Yeah, no calm, all right. Power and grounds at the TCM. That's where we are. I'm not so much worried about the ECM TCM fuse because we do have communication with the ECM, but that's something that we'll, we may have to come back and visit see if we get in power to this thing that's on pin 31 it's a pink wire next to a tan next to a red white so there's pink red white to the left tan to the right that's my feed right there the tan no the pink oh ho, ho. we got new power i need to check my pin let me just get my scale set up here uh time base wise we don't need to be on one millisecond anymore not for power and ground testing i gotta check my meter always so just touching that on battery positive uh, i may have jumped the gun here because i got no power on that stud yeah my lead my ground lead came off okay back to my pink wire huh there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Sweet. It's possible I wasn't getting my pin in there too. Before I go crazy here, let's make sure that my pin. Ah, boo. All right, so the next one I'm going to is this red white, which is battery positive. That's the one that's right next to where we were. Good battery supply. One main ground, which my brother had already had back probed, is pin 49. It's over here. Yeah, this ground is fine too. All right, so the last thing we do before we call this thing is let's let's look at the GM land bus on here. And remember, Chevy does this whole in-out thing with their modules. So we're gonna have four that are on this. Uh, one one a, a pair of those is gonna be in and the other pair is gonna be out. We're gonna check all four. So six and seven, we'll start with that. And it's tan and tan black. Network signals. Okay, let's change up our time base a little bit here. And that looks funny to me. Make sure we have a good ground. That shouldn't look like that. I should have saw those on the on the network up at the DLC and maybe I just didn't look close enough. Can negatives tan. I'm on tan black. That's can positive. That should be two and a half to three and a half. Really odd looking waveform there, isn't that? That's weird. It's got like a four volt like bias on it almost that shouldn't be there you see the packet is kind of in that range of that's k and low so that's one and a half to two and a half we're, we're kind of in that range but then it's pulling up to like over four volts like as nominal it should be two and a half volts as the nominal and then we're seeing the same thing on high which is like we're kind of in that range is two and a half to three and a half you know, you're kind of in that, but then you're pulling up to a 4.2 volt. I should have seen that on the on the network up front. In fact, that, that should be altering the whole network. Let's see the other two now. Six and seven should be 37, 38. Yeah, these two guys down here. Same thing. That's can low. Yeah, same thing. Okay, those look very strange. 
back to my box because I should have been able to see that. You know why I didn't see it? Why didn't you see it? Because what did I tell you I was doing when I checked compare it up front? When you compare between the two, you're gonna see a network that is, you know, any any alteration, any any voltage that would ride across both channels, which is like looks like 4.2 volts, um, we're not gonna see it because it cancels each other out. So what I needed to do to see that, because that's the full network, that's a full two volt swing that we're looking at right there. Um, to see what we saw up front, what I wanna do is switch this to one of my grounds. So I'm gonna switch my negative lead. And I know ideally you wanna to go to battery ground, but I'm using this. Okay, I'm gonna go chassis ground on pin four. And there it is, I do see it. So that's can high. You got like a 4.2 volt nominal or bias on that. It shouldn't be there. And then here's can low. So we're seeing a weird network waveform, especially you can really, you know, just see how wrong that looks on can low. That, that voltage shouldn't be there. And so the question then is, where's that coming from? And given that we are not communicating with the TCM, I'm just gonna unplug the TCM. Now the problem with that is the way GM does their in and out networks, we may have to jump that. I have to, you know, I gotta pull up a network topology first before I do this. Uh, or I can just do it, see what it looks like. Yeah. Okay, We're, uh, to explain it properly, I need to see the network topology. I just turned the key off. I don't need that network to go to sleep. I just want ignition power to go away. I'm gonna unplug this TCM and my network is still active right now. Unplugging this, and yeah, we've got some weird stuff going on, of course. Yeah, that voltage is gone, but without a network topology, I can't explain what we're looking at. That's can low, this is can high. Looks like everything stopped talking, now there it is. Still really weird looking. That high voltage is gone. Our nominal is now around 1.75 volts, roughly. It should be two and a half. Let me turn the key on. Okay, there we go. Key on. There's our two and a half volt. That looks good. This is a faulty TCM. Danner. Yeah. Your TCM's junk. Great. I had now, that thought. <laughs> well, here's, here's the network, check it out. So what you want to see on can low is roughly one and a half to two and a half. Now I have the TCM out of the loop, so I don't know what I'm talking to right now, yeah. but this is what you want to see. One and a half to two and a half on can low, switches to can high. We see two and a half to three and a half roughly, right? Yeah. All right, watch this. We we'll turn the key off, plug this TCM in. Wait till you see what this does to the network. And the signals are good up to here. So this is, this is something internal to this module took a hit. See how the nominal voltage is now up at like we're up at like three and a half right now. Let yeah. me turn the key on, it'll be worse. So we're up at like 4.2. And then see how the, the network's still talking. But it's got like some weird slopes on well, it. Well, the slopes are because it shouldn't be pulling up to 4.2. It should be two and a half volts as the nominal. That's can high. Should be going from two and a half to three and a half, right? And can low should be going from one and a half to two and a half. And you see it's there, but then it's pulling up to, when the, when the message isn't there, it's pulling up to 4.2 volts. So yeah. something in that TCM communication chip is messed up. Wow. If I go between the two, you won't see, and this is why the network can still talk. This is now going, well, let me switch my polarity here. This is now go, this, this would be what all the other modules are seeing. So it's, it's not seeing that interference because it's affecting both lines. That 4.2 volts that shouldn't be there that's one and a half to two and a half, two and a half to three and a half combined. So it's given us a two volt swing. That's what the computers are looking at. That's why everything's still talking. That's why network resistance is still good. That's a messed up TCM. I wonder if it'll start now that the- I didn't even try. The, well, no, it won't because it's under a keratin. Oh, okay. But I mean, like if I were to like jump it, jump the starter, cause the computer works now, mm. would it would at least run. <laughs> Possibly. I, I don't know. It won't crank then is what you're saying. It won't crank because it doesn't know it's in park. It doesn't, Why don't you know. we, well, let's smack on that TCM a couple times. Hold on, let me get my high voltage in here first. And we'll, we'll, I'll still show you guys the topology on this. 
to show you what we were talking to with the TCM unplug. Got to smack on that. No. 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 And the only other thing that would really pull that up is if you had like a bad ground or something, which we don't, right? Yes, correct. There's like nothing else in this circuit that could do that. I mean, I, I don't know the internals yeah. of a communication chip at all. So the only thing that, yes, yeah, so that would maybe do that is a bad ground. Um, but my ground was good. And that's the, let me check the diagram again, make sure we're not missing a ground. Let's get some ref low uh, signals just to see what those look like. Cause those are gonna use the computer ground for the sensor grounds. Okay, what can I look at? TFT sense low ref is a tan wire. That's the one right next to the pink one that we were looking at before. I wonder if I got a used one if the, because it's a tranny module, if it would even care if the VIN was different. It probably will, Danner. But you know, you could try it. Tan wire, that guy. Did I cross that over? All right, hold up, Danner. We got something else going on here. Well, we might not. This might just be more evidence of a faulty module, but I, I have 12 volts on a, on a reference low circuit. So I need to recheck this ground because that is super concerning on, on what I'm seeing on that. I can get one from Pitmon for 50 bucks. Hold tight, brother. Oh, that ground's fine. That ground's fine, but let me check another sensor ground. You know, there's another accessory voltage wire I didn't check too. The logic circuit from the BCM. I don't know if that's an ignition feed or what that is. I should check that. It's a brown wire, pin 11. It's this guy right here. Okay, I'm showing 14 volts on that. So that is there. We get to another sensor ground. We're gonna ground one of these circuits. So two wire sensor there makes its own voltage. Two wire sensor there makes its own voltage. The only real one I can look at is the transmission fluid temp sensor signal. That's the yellow and tan. Okay, 30 is tan. That's the one we were on. And that's next to our, our pink ignition one voltage that we were, were looking at earlier. And if we're reading 12 volts, on a sensor ground, we are. That's a problem within the module itself. That's just strike two for this module. Let's see what the transmission temp sensor signal looks like. It's yellow black. So it goes orange, space, yellow black. That's this guy. If I get 12 on this, yeah, that's a problem. Okay, cool. That should be a five volt, not 12. We're gonna take this 12 and we're gonna ground that with a test light in case I got the wrong pin. I got 12 volts on a five volt ref circuit. Nice. And I have 12 volts on a sensor ground circuit too. I mean, it's not really nice because all this does is confirm our computer's shot, but I might be able to jump this, provide the internal ground we need. There's a ground that's open in there <clears throat> and uh, maybe make this work. So I, this should pull down with my test light. May not pull all the way down. Oh, the fact that that's glowing red is not a good thing. Um, it's not a good thing from a standpoint of current flow and me jumping that, because it might be shorted to positive inside. Man, I was gonna say, let's monitor the network. While I do that, I gotta go get another pin. See if I ground this, if it pulls that four volts down a little bit. It did. Oh, it just started talking to me now, like regular. See my yeah. voltage is now two and a half. Uh, That's cool. Uh, well, no, we still have 12 volts on that sensor ground, but we now have two and a half volts on the on the network, 
I wonder if I could talk to this TCM now. Might be able to. Yep, I can. That means it should start now. But our, we have an issue, because I have data here. We have an issue, our transmission fluid temp, that's saying 77 degrees. That's definitely not accurate, not with 12 volts on that. We're just looking at board stuff here now, guys. Let's, let's get codes out of this. This is out of the TCM. It's saying no codes. <laughs> that's not accurate either, but it should start. What, what else is left off of this thing? It cranks. <laughs> it cranks. Hey, that's further than I got. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not starting, but it cranks. How is it saying no codes? And I definitely have 12 volts on this TFT circuit. Uh, it's a no com again. That makes sense that it would do that. Yeah, we're back up to our four volt weird ass waveform. Okay, so we're gonna ground this completely. I'm just gonna do it because as soon as I ground that there, my voltage lowers. We're below four volts now. Let's go back to five so you guys can see it. So it's like three and a half. It, it just went back down to two and a half. That's pretty, pretty cool. And now we're back to four. Back to two. Okay, I'm just gonna ground this. I, I hesitate to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So this is transmission fluid temp sensor ground at 12. Momentarily ground that. Let's make sure we don't see smoke. Nope, good, okay, good. So we're grounding the whole board. And then I'll show you network signal. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could rig that. That's it's not gonna be right. See if it starts or cranks at least. Still can't get the key out and it won't start. Why? Network looks good though. I like that. So what we were talking about earlier is that looks like a bad ground. Well, it was, it was a bad ground inside the board that was elevating that CAN network. Um, this is now at the uh, box itself. So we're looking at all of the network now. You see our two and a half to three and a half. So that's a good lesson for all of us on elevated CAN network voltage levels, it's also a good lesson why sometimes you don't want to compare the two. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. This is an example of a time where you would not would not want to compare the two because you'd miss it. But what does a bad ground look like on a CAN network? Exactly that, it elevates the entire network. Instead of being two and a half volt nominal, two and a half volt bias, whatever you want to call it, that's what it looks like with a faulty ground. That's good looking CAN positive now. Here's good looking can negative, and then comparing the two together, all right, can high to can low, you see the same thing we had before. Okay, why is it not starting? Now that's where we are. We fixed this can issue, we fixed this communication issue, but it's not starting. See, now we have, we have communication. All right, let's go back and clear all the codes. For those of you maybe confused about what I did, uh, we have a computer module board that's externally grounded. We checked that ground, but I used a sensor ground to tell me that internal to the board, there is a break in the ground circuit, right? 12 volts on a sensor ground, 12 volts on a five volt ref circuit. In fact, we should jump back over and check the ref. Before I forget, let's do that right now. I want to show you the ref circuit. It's not going to be exactly five because the transmission fluid um, sensor is plugged in, but it should be somewhere around one to three volt range, somewhere in that area, while keeping the sensor ground grounded. If I jump to my sensor signal, which if you remember was like yellow black, this should not be 12 anymore. It is. Yeah, that's not right. 
So we're, we're going to have some other issues then in this board. Okay, there we go. All right, two volts. My ground pin just came out. There we go. Two volts on that circuit. And watch when I take my ground away. I'll just do it from here. Watch what it does. It goes to 12. Oh, it was 12 for a second. Then went back to two. There, back to 12. Bad ground inside the board. So what that does is that elevates your 5 volt reference circuit too. So that's not a great ground, what I'm providing. We'll kind of monitor that. I'm going to re-clear all these codes because I just set some codes with what I did. And then re-reading all of our codes. No engine, no tranny codes, no airbag codes. Outside air temp circuit fault short to battery. That's in the BCM. And then I have a CAN bus communication current DTC test not passed since power up. That's in the BCM. Let's see if this starts. My shift interlock is still not working properly because if I turn the key off, I can't get the key out. Speedometer stuck at 50 mile per hour. Tachometer's moving. No engine codes, why? Let's see, the fuse box was replaced. Was something else maybe left out? Let's go back. Let's go to our engine. No codes. See if I can make the fuel pump turn on. Fuel pump relay. Just doing a bi-directional control of the pump. I didn't hear a relay click and I don't hear the pump. Okay. Okay, just one more thing. They thought the computer that they bought, they thought the computer was bad. Okay. So they buy a computer and then they thought, well, the new computer is bad. And I don't know if I have the original computer or the original one was returned. I have no idea. I, I don't. Well, the good thing so far is I, I, I know 100% certain. I mean, we did already based on our checks that our TCM was bad. Yeah. This TCM is bad. I, I have an open in the ground circuit. I'm providing a ground through the TFT, the transmission fluid temp signal that's at 12 volts, shouldn't be at 12. I'm grounding it to make everything work. And now okay. we're at a no start. My shift interlock still doesn't un, undo, but I can crank it now. Yeah. But I don't hear the fuel pump running either. So is it maybe the fuel pump relay was left out? Yeah, who knows? So they changed this box too, right? It looks like it, don't it? So this is my no. pump relay. Why is that so loose? That's super loose. Why is that so loose? There we go. It might start now. That relay is like not making good contact. So this box is junk. Did somebody stuff a pin in there and spread it apart? That's what it looks like. Somebody absolutely did. See how you can see tabs on those three and you can't see a tab in that one? Yeah, somebody freaking hogged that thing out. Why you don't do testing on a circuit like that? Like you just ruined this box. Let's see if I can tweak this pin a little bit. This is not right, but I'm gonna do it because I want, I want the car to start. Well, I could do that if I had some. Instead, I'm gonna take this pin, because we have other relays, they have two boxes, and I'm just gonna twist, see how I just twisted the pin? <laughs> twisted pin. Ah, oh, it's much tighter. <laughs> Here, wait, let's see if it clicks. Nice, I'll put my mic close. Let's get out of this bi-directional mode. It should start. <laughs> Troubleshooting so fun sometimes. Now what else is wrong with this car? We don't care. The other cool thing is we don't have to come back for a new TCM program or update because we just jumped it to make it work. <laughs> so we showed enough evidence to prove TCM fault. Listen to that timing chain. See if we're talking to the TCM. Yes, we are. As far as our transmission fluid temp data, 
and why um, it was actually reading before just a default number, I mean, I really can't answer that. If I take this ground away, this TCM is gonna stop talking and it just might not be reporting that data properly. I mean, we could do it just to see, but it's really not necessary for anything at all. Um, I'll show you the scope. So that's my transmission fluid temp at two volts. If I take the ground away, it's not immediate for that voltage rises. Let's just watch the signal first. We'll kind of bounce back and forth between that and the data. There we go. We have a, oh, that's just a two, two degree temp change. That's going to jump back to 12. I'll show you the ground right now while we're waiting. There's, a, there's your 12. And then I lost calm. So yeah, no calm with the TCM there, with it like that. I really can't show you the data on that front. This is with our ground re-established. Yeah, so I'm not gonna be able to show you guys that because we don't have data when I take the ground away. Faulty ground, internal to the board. I mean, the only other variable there is if my pin is not making contact on the external ground. So I should probably check that one more time because with a bad external ground, we, we would absolutely have a bad sensor ground. I'm gonna grab my hook tool for that. Got it? So this is gonna ensure that I'm gonna have a good connection on that wire. And then the nice thing about this probe is I can put an alligator clip right here or my leads directly I can go right to the back of this and we want to make sure that that ground is good and you see that it is we got zero volts on that circuit just to show you guys again what the sensor ground look like you hear the rpm change there we'll come off of this go back to our i'll oh, just go to the ground itself 12 volts Sensor ground, ground that circuit. You actually hear the RPM change too. So anyway, I wanted to do that test with the, with the piercing probe because I was worried about that main ground. Let's make sure in the diagram that I'm not missing another ground because that could do what we, we are seeing, which is a faulty internal ground. Let's just make sure we're not missing anything. I'm gonna shut this off too. This thing stinks. He's got other stuff going on with this, but I'm not here to fix everything. Stop lamp, TFT, battery positive, TFT low ref. Yeah, there's no other grounds on this. All right, and this is above and beyond. So you get a car like this in a shop, this stuff can add up. I mean, it's here for a no crank condition, no calm condition, which was fixed. My brother fixed grounds on the engine computer. Uh, we identified a faulty TCM. Now it runs, now it starts, but it stinks. So let me ask you guys, is the stinking exhaust, the running problem part of the car, part of the diagnosis? The answer, hell no, not a freaking chance. Yes, we were able to identify this quickly because of knowledge and because of experience. Doesn't matter, separate problem, okay? We're gonna do it just because we're here and you guys might want to see it. Only reason I'm doing it. This thing stinks. What I'm interested in is what my oxygen sensors and fuel trim looks like. And I'm not doing any kind of full diagnosis. I'm only doing this because of how stinky the exhaust is. This thing stinks, Danner. Smell it. So what are you grounding your... I'm grounding the transmission fluid temperature, uh, temperature sensor signal. Trims don't look bad. O2s look okay. All right, I ain't worried about it. A little stinky from not running, I don't know. The shift interlock still doesn't, I still can't take the key out. Watch Caleb, under here. Or do I have to step on the brake on this? Uh, I don't know, maybe try pulling it in and out of gear. Maybe it's looking for... Still can't pull the key I out. Don't, maybe they have something disconnected under there. Okay. I have no idea. The console's out of it, like I... Okay. All right, so I'm grounding and we can send it that way if you want. We can run an external ground on that transmission fluid temp sensor signal. 
Otherwise he needs a TCM and it's gonna need to be programmed. So I'm grounding the TFT sensor ground circuit because inside the board, you'd have a five volt regulator that's gonna use the board ground and then it gets externally grounded. And I'm saying the board ground is bad. The external ground's good, the board ground's bad. Oh. And I'm providing through the TFT low ref circuit a ground so for the board. Ground, when you ground that, then you five uh, volt, your 12 turns back to five. Well, it would be five if I had the TFT unplugged, but it's only two with it plugged in. I heard a misfire. That's why this thing's stinking. Do you hear that? It did something funny. It could be my ground is coming and going too. But anyway, does that make sense on what I'm doing? Yeah. So, so it, that's a low, so that's a two wire. Two wire. So the reason it's not five volts is because I'm only on a fluid temp sensor circuit. And I can't see the five unless I unplug the TFT. Yeah. If I'd unplug the TFT, then it would go to five. I have no other five volt ref circuit really that I can look at on this transmission. It's its own. The switches might be five volts, but I didn't bother checking them. Like the position, gear position switches. Can you see any data on that or? On any? the scan tool? Yeah. On the, yeah. Does it know it's in park? Yeah. On the transmission? I mean, it would have to if you're able to start it. Correct. Yeah, no, everything's good. I have data. So do I order a used one and just see what happens? I mean, that's up to you, man. The nice thing for me is like, we got what we needed. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just saying from, yeah. a, from a standpoint of, I don't want to be the guy programming it. GM's yeah. changed their programming. I'm not doing it. You get, we'll, we'll get Tino into program it, sell the job. So it's out of your hands and don't worry about it. Get it, get a TCM, list it. Here's what you need and add bill in for Tino to come in to program whatever his fees are to program the module and, and be done with it. And then put this thing out in the lot and don't worry about it and do something else. Well, run me that temporary ground before you leave. Yeah, do you, just, you yeah. want me to solder it just on solder there? It and, in, and then we'll just, we'll tape it up and hide it if we ever fix it. So you all. wanted to know too though about the, the um, transmission um, select. Well, yeah. Right? So we want what? See, it always says command and gear one, even though you're in park. I know, right. but there should be a, a park. Um, there might be a uh, park reverse, you know, drive low. I'm not seeing one. That might be in the, actually be in the engine computer. Would it be? Oh no, trans switch, park. I'll go. Tell me what it says. You got reverse? Reverse. Neutral. Neutral. Drive. Drive, D4. Yep. D3. Yep. D2. Yep. Yep. So it works. Yes. So something going on with your shift interlock. Don't know, don't care. I'll run your ground for you and we'll be done. How's that? That's fine. I was gonna say that probably fried because of the, all the other bad grounds I had at the at the beginning. It could be that, or it could be it, it fried because they were jumping things that they shouldn't have been jumping. Maybe, I don't know, you know? Because when it came in, one of those ground wires, they just ran one up here just for the hell of it, and then I put it back into the harness. But oh, you know, know what, listen. I wonder if that pin's loose. Oh. You hear that? I do. And that. Hang on a second here. I'll, I'll hang, hang on, on all a day. second here. Because I was getting some weird, you hear that coming and going? Okay, this is why you don't back probe sometimes. This is another example of why you want a piercing probe at times. For you guys that are like, ah, oh, I never use a piercing probe, yeah? Well, you should be, because I just missed that because of a back probing pin. This might not be a bad board ground, although it has to be because that's external. Fixing that pin right there, that's the sensor getting its ground at the board. It can't be a bad ground at that pin. That's the sensor ground. So even if that pin, the sensor ground pin is making poor contact, all we would have is a faulty transmis transmission fluid temp sensor circuit because it's jacking up the 5 volt reference to 12 and it's making it a no comp. Why was it it's clicking not, when you were touching it? Well, it, it still is like, I don't think it's necessarily that pin. I think it, it's possibly, let's see if this, this is talking right now without my ground. It is talking right now. 
So and you don't have a ground. No, I do. But you didn't. You don't I have do. your redundant ground. I, I don't. Oh, but as soon as you touch it, it went out. Yeah. See, the thing about that too, though, is you can have a male, female. So that's your male pin. Here's your female connector. And as I'm wiggling the wiring, I'm, I'm actually like wiggling at, the pin in the like board. At, like that fuse box we did. I'm just gonna run a ground, Danner. I mean, those, they don't look spread apart at all. We could try tightening them up, you want to? I would, mine as well. I mean, mainly the ground pin's the one I'm worried about. Cause it, at this point, yeah, could it be the ground that we were back probing that has the bad connection and it's showing good because it is good. But, but the thing about that, Danner, is if it was, as soon as you back probe that ground, you would have made a good contact. Oh yeah. And it's this one on the end. It's this real fat pin on the end is your ground. Okay. Give me, uh, give me a pin. You got a pin? Like a T pin? Yeah. I want to snug this ground up. Nope. We could probably open this up and fix it. I no longer have that condition. All right, running aground. This guy. There's your bad ground. It's only eight volts right now, instead of 12, but it's still bad. We're gonna fix it. I mean, fix in finger quotes. Bad ground. Danner does not have liquid tape, which is what I need to do this right. I need some wire, Danner. A wire and an eyelet. Can I have that? Sure. Sweet. Just so we know here, people, this, this is not an ideal fix. We're gonna have noise on this TFT circuit that you never had before. There's a reason they ground these sensors at the module. But I'm not worried about it. This is gonna make the car drivable. Our fix for this fuel pump relay was not really a good fix, right? That was a temporary band-aid for something that somebody else screwed up. It really needs to have the other box put back in. Never needed a box. Oh, oh. Just burn yourself. A little bit. Good enough for this janky, janky fix. reading on this ground. I'll grab, you know what I'll do? Instead of the ground, I'll grab, we'll get the transmission fluid temp sensor signal. This is the one we want to see about two volts on. We go to a different ground so I can show you guys what, what I'm doing here. All right, so nine volts on that transmission fluid temp sensor ground. There you go. Transmission fluid temp sensor signal. Let's get you a digital number. 1.4 volts. We're effectively grounding the board through the TFT signal return, which goes to the board ground. And then now what we'll have is communication with our, there you go, with our TCM, we have, we have comms. Okay, taking this off. We'll put some liquid tape on any of the whole, little tiny holes we made. And to be honest with you, they're so small, but I have no liquid tape with me at the moment. Danner is gonna handle that. It was not a pin contact issue, what it was, and this is very common is you pick up a connector and you start wiggling it and what you're doing is you're wiggling the board and people don't realize that what you think is a connector problem is not and i even did too so incorrect on that i want to get some of these probes in your hands i have 40 of them 40 of them that we're prepped to give away where they're going to give out codes and we'll get a free one in your hands and sell some more probes for my friend phil 
And again, my tool revenues, if I'm plugging tools here, guys, I'm just pumping that back into a, into a pool of uh, money that we're just giving back to our community. We thank you guys so much for supporting what we do, both premium members on my website and non-premium members here on YouTube, and uh, if that's where we're putting this, and uh, just, just grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you so much, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, guys, quick follow-up. Um, we were not able to go back to the shop when the module was replaced. Uh, my brother needed to get it out of there. But just the info to you guys, he did put a used module in it, and it did not need to be programmed on this 2005 model year. Sure, the VIN's probably going to be wrong, but it worked perfectly, shifted perfectly, speedometer uh, then worked when he was finished. So even though we grounded that board through the thermistor ground circuit, um, there were still other issues, other circuits in the board that were not grounded properly, speedometer circuit being one, maybe input output speed sensors. I'm not sure. We didn't look at those. Um, he did say it didn't shift right when, when we had our ground on there. So we didn't send it that way. We put a module in it, uh, but all is well on that front. And then also with the shift interlock, um, where we had to manually push the button, someone was under there and did have some things unplugged. So all of that is now taken care of. If you have any questions on the sensor ground circuit and how that ties into the board and what we did, we have those lectures on Scanner Dan or Premium. Chapter six would be where you wanna spend some time, uh, which is titled thermistors, and that's the circuit I was dealing with, was that thermistor ground. And then the other one that I would suggest is the five volt reference circuit, chapters nine and 10. Uh, really deal with that reference circuit and why voltage would be high uh, with on the reference circuit with a bad ground. And one more, I'll put a link right here to one of my favorite videos. It was on an old car, 92 uh, Ford that had a bad computer ground with high elevated reference voltages and sensor ground circuits. Great, great video. Even though it's a 92 model year car, um, 30 years later, it's still relevant. Uh, and I'll put that link here. Guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next time.